Hello friends, this video on p-block elements part 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's understand some of the important compounds of the oxygen family. What is the dioxygen, sulf simple oxides of this oxygen family, ozones, I will also understand the allotropes of sulfur, sulfur dioxide, oxoacids of sulfur and sulfuric acid. So let's start first with the dioxygen. See dioxygen is nothing but my O2. That is my dioxygen. Very very important compound for survival of human being. Without this we can't survive. Right? This is the compound which you breathe. So before understanding the property of this dioxygen, let's understand how do we prepare this dioxygen. So there are various ways. In the lab, if you want to prepare, what we do is we heat any oxygen containing salt. As I told, a lot of salt has oxygen, for example, carbonate salt, right? So, a lot of salts have uh, nitrate salt, chlorate salt. So, chlorate salt, carbonate salt, my nitro nitrate salt. So, these salts have oxygen. Just heat, one is the lab method, I'll say. In the lab what we do is we heat my oxygen containing salt and with this since the salt had oxygen and oxygen containing salt can be chlorate, nitrate, permanganate, carbonate it will give you oxygen for example I take KClO3 I heat this I get KCl plus pretty easy nothing great in this so I'll get 3 by 2 by the reaction yes and you heat this with some catalyst that is the lab way but we need oxygen more so we need some other ways also okay so what we do is we decompose the oxides so we decompose my decompose oxides of metal and this metal has to be low in the electrochemical series right for example uh, we have ag2o we heat this we get silver and oxygen or let's suppose we have hgo you heat this you get mercury and oxygen. You have PB3O4. You heat this, you get PBO and oxygen. You have PBO2 also. You heat this, you get PBO and oxygen. Okay, so just by thermal decomposition of oxides also of metal, which are low in the electrochemical uh, series. For this, we generally heat this and we get oxygen. We also generate this oxygen by from our hydrogen peroxide. See this hydrogen peroxide, it can be readily decomposed into water because we have seen that hydrogen peroxide actually is unstable. It can be easily decomposed into water and oxygen actually by the catalyst such as my finely divided metals and platinum metals I think or and uh, magnesium dioxide you can actually so it is manganese dioxide I mean yeah. manganese dioxide you actually convert H2O2 to water and oxygen so this is oxygen we got so these are all small scale actually. So what about the large scale? In the large scale, we want in the industry. So in large scale, what we do is, we either do electrolysis of water, we have this water, we do the electrolysis of this and with hydrogen as uh, my cathode, anode is positive, so anode is oxygen and this is 
hydrogen. So hydrogen is cathode and uh, oxygen is anode. You do electrolysis of water. This is water. The blue one is our water. Yeah. What you get is oxygen. We also get oxygen from the air. Air has so much oxygen. We have seen almost 22% oxygen. So from the air, we get oxygen by removing uh, impurities from oxygen, such as carbon dioxide, my water vapors, and whatever gas you get, you do a fractional distillation of this uh, gas to remove nitrogen also. So oxygen generally has nitro, air has oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, some water vapor. So you take the oxygen, you remove carbon dioxide, you remove vapors, pretty easy to remove, right? And now out of these, uh, removing nitrogen and oxygen from the air, we use fractional distillation. So removing water is pretty easy. You can just use any other dehydrating agent. It will suck all the water. You, removing carbon dioxide is also pretty easy. You can use COO, CAO. It will remove all the carbon dioxide and form calcium carbonate. But removing nitrogen uh, from that mixture is little tough. So we use fractional distillation. Let's see some properties of dioxygen. The moment you think of oxygen, you think of pure, colorless, without any smell, odorless gas. And you're right. Oxygen is my colorless. So it shows gray color, but that is because to show some color else, you won't be able to see the oxygen. Actually, you don't see the oxygen. Why? Because this is, there's no color. It's colorless. You won't feel the oxygen because there is no smell. So it is colorless, odorless gas. It is soluble in water. And a good proof for this is the aquatic animals. See, aquatic animals plant or plants also survive in water. Why? Because oxygen is soluble in water. Because they also need oxygen. Right? And oxygen is soluble in water and the solubility is pretty good. Soluble in water. And solubility is pretty good. It is 3 centimeter cube of oxygen in 100 centimeter cube of water almost 3% pretty decent at my STP that is sufficient to support my aquatic life now this oxygen is gas in my STP but actually it will liquefy at 90 Kelvin at 90 Kelvin you can make it as liquid and at uh, 55 Kelvin you can freeze it and make it solid. For these oxygen, there are three stable isotopes. There are three stable isotopes for oxygen. O16, O17, and O18. You will write on the left hand side actually. O16, O17, O18. This oxygen is paramagnetic. We have seen this. So when we read about uh, the molecular bond theory and balance bond theory, there we have seen that oxygen is paramagnetic. In fact, this is attracted by magnets. We have seen a picture also where there was a liquid oxygen flowing in and there were two magnets here. Right? This is North Pole and this is South Pole Libby. And this oxygen was tilted towards one of the pole. So oxygen is paramagnetic and we can actually prove it using uh, theories we have discussed. This oxygen directly react with almost all the metals. Almost, almost all metals. So it directly react with almost all the metals. Okay. And also non-metals also. Exception is gold, platinum, they are exception and some noble gas. But apart from that, for example, FeO, CO, uh, calcium oxide, carbon dioxide, they form oxide with almost all the metals and non-metals. This is non-metal, this is metal. Almost all the metals and non-metals, they form oxide. And this reaction is exothermic. Right? 
but the reaction doesn't take place on its own even the rusting of iron it takes place very slowly if it is exothermic it should happen on its own immediately but there is a catch why this reaction doesn't happen on its own even this this reaction from metal or uh, non metal to oxide this reaction is exothermic but still the reaction doesn't happen on its own why because to initiate this reaction external heating is required why because the bond dissociation enthalpy of oxygen is very high almost 493 kJ per mole so once this is overcome then only the reaction will start for example i have calcium plus oxygen will give calcium oxide or aluminum plus oxygen will give al2o3 or even phosphorus will react with oxygen to form p4o10 carbon will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide so this oxygen you need this much energy to break this bond because if this bond is not break, broken how this reaction will take place correct when the methane will react with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water so thus you need some energy to break this bond it's a very good question all the conversion from metal or non metal to oxide is exothermic still it doesn't happen on its own it needs some energy why the answer is pretty simple yeah to for a reaction to happen the oxygen double bond should break and there's a hell lot of energy required to break this double bond there is nothing but 493 kJ per kJ per mole and thus we need some energy to initiate this reaction okay let's see the uses of oxygen now it is used for respiration that is very very much you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide oxygen is in both the case for burning oxygen is required oxygen is must for burning without oxygen you can't burn stuff this oxyacetylene welding is for metals oxygen is required in hospitals we need oxygen for some time patient they are not able to breathe properly so they are on the oxygen if you want to fly at high altitude altitudes and high altitudes the oxygen level is less and that sometimes uh, you tend to take a big container with oxygen and tend to use as a mask even if you are climbing at a high uh, mountain let's assume this is a high mountain you are climbing you are climber there also you need uh, this kind of uh, oxygen cylinders to breathe rock mechanism you want to find the age of the rocks that time also you need to understand uh, oxygen reactions because most of the rocks is oxygen okay let's take some numerical which of the following does not react with oxygen directly zinc yes it reacts titanium yes platinum no why platinum is a little uh, noble metal iron yes obviously rusting of iron we have seen so platinum is the only one which does not react with oxygen directly it is non reactive metal platinum and gold if you complete this reaction ch4 plus co ch c2h4 burn in oxygen it will give you carbon dioxide and water only right we have seen most of the hydrocarbons they burn in oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water we can balance this reaction the next is aluminum plus oxygen Al plus oxygen will actually give you Al2O3, and this is the balanced reaction. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.